Hey, fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Photo Fields. Now we're jumping into a preview for the Panthers game coming up here in just a couple of seconds. First, though, pin comment down below. We'll start with this. Who do you got? Type E down below for Eagles, which is where I'm going. I'll tell you my prediction later on in the video. Or type P down below for Panthers. Go down below in the comment section. Give me your picks. Today's video is brought to you guys by our friends at BetQL. Go to chatsports.com forward slash EaglesQL forward slash the discount code chat Eagles for 25% off any of their subscription offerings. All right, we jump into a week five matchup that I said last week was a must win, and so that means this week is a must must win, right? I don't know. Goodness gracious. Carolina. Carolina is a very interesting football team because they're sitting at three and one. And you didn't really expect them to be three and one at the start of the season, and yet they you know, don't feel like a 3 and one football team. Like, you go back and watch film, you look at some of the teams that they play, they don't feel like a very, you know, strong 3 one football team. Now, that doesn't mean that they're bad. I think they're very, very good, and I think the Eagles can easily lose this football game. I mean, right now, the over-under sitting at Carolina, uh, sorry, the, uh, the line is like, what, minus four for the Panthers? So, you know, Vegas thinks the Panthers are going to win this game. But it definitely feels like one of the less scary teams and one that as long as the Eagles don't overlook them and they play good defense, which is a big actual question mark, I think they can win this football game and you know get to two and three and really start to hopefully turn this season around and be competitive. Because you lose this game, you go to one and four, and then, you know, we'll still have hope, but Hope definitely dwindles from between one and four uh, versus something like a two and three. I think the big focus again here, and it's the focus every single week, right? When you when you talk about Jalen Hurts, you talk about what he's done over the first four games, right? I mean, let's just think about this. For, in terms of Jalen Hurts, just quickly, week one, fantastic. Week two wasn't terrible, but also wasn't great against the 49ers. You know, the red zone issues, week three, awful against the Cowboys. And then week four, we talked about it last week. He was great against the Chiefs. So really, he's had two really good games, one mediocre game and one bad game. And if he can do what he did against the Chiefs going forward and play like he did, the efficiency, I mean, the accuracy was good, minus a couple of throws, not turning the ball over, moving out of the pocket when he needs to, uh, the Eagles can win a football game like this. Like, can Hurts back up last week? That's my big focus going into this game. And we'll talk about the defense. The defense has got to really show up and show out, but can 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 Jalen Hurts back up what he was able to do last week? That, to me, is a big key in this game. If he plays like he did against the Chiefs going forward, the Eagles can be an 8-9 or 10-win football team, but if he has games like he did against the Dallas Cowboys where he looked lost and the play con was bad and he was throwing you know interceptions, then you know it, 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 this ship is going to sink here a lot faster than a lot of us uh, are hoping. I'll ask you guys this. Over under 300 yards for Jalen Hurts on Sunday. He had 387 against the Chiefs. What do you think? Type O down below for over. Type U down below for under. I think it'd be over. I think this defense especially without Stephon Gilmore. We'll talk about that. Is a very gettable uh, uh, defense in terms of points. I think the Dallas Cowboys give a very good, um, let's say, uh, a blueprint on how to go ahead and beat this Panther defense. Now, as I mentioned earlier, BetQL is a sponsor for today's video. And, of course, they are one of, in my opinion, the best ways to get the, an advantage over your sports book. Right now, they have their Best Bets computer model. It scans over 350,000 unique bets per year in terms of uh, giving you the best bets and the best, uh, I would say, odds in terms of, you know, what's a good bet this weekend? What's a bad bet this weekend? What's a five-star bet this weekend? What's a one-star bet this weekend? They got the great lines. There's the spreads and all the information and research that you need in order to go ahead and win your bets this weekend. I've been positive almost the entire year basically the entire year. I've been possible every single week, and a lot of it is due to the fact that I use uh, BetQL. Go to chatsports.com forward slash Eagles QL forward slash get started now, and I'm just going to code chat Eagles at payment to get 25% off any of their subscription offerings. All the info on this is down below in the description box. Now, as we know, Stefan Gilmore, of course, is now a Carolina Panther, but as I mentioned in my video yesterday, I'll say it one more time, he can't play on Sunday because they technically traded for him. When you trade for him, when he's on the uh, the pup list, you have to wait till after week six. So he's going to be eligible week seven to go ahead and play. I think they play the Giants that week, so go Carolina that week. But there will be no Stefan Gilmore. They don't have J.C. Horn, and so the defense is not necessarily as uh, potent, I would say as it can be or as it will be later on this year, which means hopefully Devontae Smith another big game. How about people backing up what they did last week? How about Devontae Smith just bawling out of his mind on Sunday against the uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs? I mean, over 100 yards, he was just running incredible routes. I think if we can get, again, Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurst that we saw this past week, this team can really start to do some damage. That leads us into Miles Sanders, who... Uh, has done a really good job of not v being a distraction because he could very easily right now go to the media and talk about how, you know, I need more touches, give me the football more, but he's been very quiet. He's been very, you know, team first. And Nick Serrano was asked about Miles Sanders yesterday, and he's a very interesting quote we'll throw up on the screen right now. Quote, does he want the football? Of course he does. And that's and that's any good player, any good player in general. That's the same way it's going to be in the receiver room or the tight end room or the running back room. That's all they, they all want the ball. 
It's a good problem to have. You guys, that 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 you guys, that you got guys. You mean that want the football, and that's our job to get it to them. But there is only one football. When you kind of are going up another field like we did last week, the guys got the football last week. It's just a product of what's happening, and so I think the guys see that. And I think that that's kind of a fair point, right? I think that they were moving the ball well enough to where you didn't have to force the ball to Sanders. But why not just include him in the offense because he's a great player and should get the ball regardless of what the offense is doing, whether moving it forward or even backwards. To me, Carolina, this will be a key a little bit later on in today's video. You got to RPO the Panthers to death. The Eagles have been at their best when they go up-tempo and when they RPO teams. When you can have the, the option of running the football with Jalen Hurts, and the option of hopefully running the football with Miles Sanders, or throwing the ball. And they do that a ton on the drives that are successful, and then they get around the red zone and they stop RPOing because they're trying to you know just, just punch it in or do something a little bit cute, and it, it just doesn't work. I think they got to RPO the Panthers to death. I think the Panthers, we saw it yesterday, or last week, as Dak Prescott got a lot of rushing yards. They can be got if you run the RPO correctly. I think the Eagles have had success doing that. We'll be back to the Super Bowl, and they can have success doing that here uh, on Sunday. Let me ask you guys this. Will Sanders have more or less than 10 carries on Sunday? If you type uh, more, type M down below for more. I think they'll have less than type L down below for less. All right, we'll get into my keys here in just one second. I want to give a shout-out to our friends at BetMGM. Go to chatsports.com forward slash EaglesMGM and sign up to create your BetMGM account in order to get a free year of BetQL. Use the uh, deposit $10 into your BetMGM account. Bet the 10 bucks, and you'll receive a free year of BetQL uh, within 24 hours of your wager settling. So you have an account to bet from, and then you have the BetQL, uh, all their info and all their best bets, computer models, and everything to give you the best options. That way, when you do bet from the BetMGM uh, account, you hopefully are winning a lot of money and hitting on all of your bets. Link is down below in the description box. All right, keys to the game. I already mentioned the first one. You got to RPO the Panthers. Like, don't don't get cute, right? Run the offense that works. And the offense that works right now is an RPO-based offense and also, of course, running the football, but an RPO offense with Hurts moving, with Sanders getting in the football, with Gainwell getting the football, with a lot of motion. Do what you did against the Chiefs, which is a lot of RPOs. That is the key to success uh, on offense. Number two keep the tight ends involved. They got him involved this past week. I mean, Zach Ertz uh, should have had a touchdown catch. Dallas Goddard should have had a, a touchdown catch. Both were called back, but you could see them trying to get the tight ends a little bit more involved, and I like that. I think that that is important, especially for this offense. So as much as we wanted to RPO, the pass option, the P and the pass option of the RPO is the passing game, and I think finding the tight ends across the middle uh, is extremely important for this offense going forward. Number three, we're going to say each week until it happens, just run the damn ball. Like, the R version of RPO is run. So run the ball. I want to see Miles Sanders get more than 10 carries. Like, I want to see Miles Sanders have a 100 yard game. Like, we haven't seen Miles Sanders have a 100 yard game since I think the Saints game, which was November of last year. Like, that was, and he had like one really big run, so it really wasn't like a true 100 yard game. Run the ball. Do it until you can't run the ball anymore. Good football teams can do it whether they have success at it or not. Key five, you can get after Sam Darnold. Like, this offensive line is still the weakness for the Carolina Panthers. Let me talk about the Eagles a lot in this preview. The Carolina Panthers, you know, five sacks to the Dallas Cowboys last week. And I know Mike and Parsons is all the rage right now, but Dallas's front four is not as good as it can be because of the Marcus Lawrence has been out. I think that you can definitely get some pressure, and it's needed because Fletcher Cox, we talked about, has been MIA. The only great pass rusher on on that defensive line is Javon Hargrave. Everybody else has been, Derek Barnett's done nothing. Ryan Kerrigan's been completely irrelevant. Like, figure out a way to get some pressure. Hopefully, Jonathan Ginnon starts bringing pressure, but this is an offense that you can get pressure on because the offensive line is not that great. Finally, and this one will go probably for the rest of the year, show some discipline. And Nick Sirianni talked about this in a press conference saying that they might talk about discipline more than any other team in the NFL. And it, whether that's true or not, it's not showing on the field. They're the most penalized team by far. Show me some discipline. Like, show me that you're not going to jump off sides. Show me you're not going to hold on a third down and four. Show me that you're not going to, you know, commit that pass interference penalty that puts the ball at the one-yard line. Like, the amount of penalties that they've had that have killed drives or have extended drives for the opposing team or have taken touchdowns off the board, like... Oh my goodness, can you please show some discipline? Give me some discipline on something. Like, give me a clean all around win. Can we have a clean all around win? You had a clean all around win week one. Haven't seen one since. Let's get back onto the clean all around win track. Show me some discipline. This key going into uh, number five going into this weekend. Now, I have picked Philadelphia um, in three of the four weeks. I picked the Chiefs last week, and I was right, so I'm two for two because I picked the Eagles against the 49ers and the Cowboys. I was wrong about that, so I'm, I'm two and two in betting the Eagles. Uh, I'm taking them th this week, and I'm betting this game. I think the Eagles plus four is a great bet, uh, so if you use your bet MGM account. Side note, I'm going to Eagles 27. Give me Panthers 24. That, to me, is uh, is going to be the score. I think Philadelphia's offense is going to get going, and hopefully the defense is able to hold on because that is an important factor that uh, we need to talk about enough on today's video. Okay, give me your score prediction down below right now in the comments section. I say Eagles. Eagles 27, Panthers 24. I want yours. Uh, I'll be reading through those uh, for the rest of the week. 
All right, ultimate for today on our Philadelphia Eagles preview video versus the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Stay up to date on all the latest uh, Eagle news and rumors. We have a mailbag video coming up later on this week. Plenty of great content. So make sure you guys go down below and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Again, for Philadelphia Eagles now, I am your host, Thomas Mott. As we are out of time, we'll go ahead and sign off. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your week. And hopefully, we can both come back on Monday and enjoy an actual Eagle victory and get to 2-3, and three, right? Is that too much to ask? Like, can we get to 2-3? and three? Oh, man, I hope that's the case. All right, again, Philadelphia Eagles now. Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.